So what can lead to a cyst in someone's brain? In yesterday's case study, I presented the case of a 25-year-old female who came to me with headaches for quite some time. She had had headaches over the years, but they've just gotten worse as time has gone on. She had had an MRI of her brain done in the past, which showed this large cyst in her temporal lobe, but she was told that it wasn't the source of her headaches. Here is the repeat MRI that I did with contrast that shows marked enlargement of this cyst over the past three years. Where you can see the center part of the brain is being pushed over by this large cyst. Now there was no abnormal enhancement of this cyst, but looking at it, you can see this lighter gray intensity within the cyst as compared to the black, which would be the spinal fluid. These structures within the brain are normal. These are called our ventricles, which are the fluid filled spaces of the brain. And this is the lateral ventricle, but this large cyst appears to be coming off a portion of this lateral ventricle. So the diagnosis here is something called a porencephalic cyst, which is a little different than an arachnoid cyst, which some of you guys mentioned in the comments. What does that mean? Basically, it's thought that these cysts form in utero or during the last portion of gestation. And what happens is a part of the brain can suffer some type of ischemic insult or stroke. That basically means that part of the brain doesn't form right, and then the baby develops this cavity where the brain should have been. So it is congenital, but why did this get bigger at 25 years old? Going back and restudying her MRI that was done three years ago, you can almost see the septum that's developing within the cyst. You can see it even more clearly right here where this part of the fluid is darker gray and this is more black. So what I suspect happened is this portion of the cyst grew as time went on because it was trapped. Think of that membrane kind of like a ball valve effect where fluid can go in, but it can't go out. So over time, it just enlarges. And as that cyst enlarges, the pressure in her head began to increase, causing the worsening headache. I did the MRI with contrast to rule out something more concerning like a malignancy or a tumor. I then placed what's called an external ventricular drain into her ventricles to measure her opening pressure. And guess what? It was three times a normal limit. So literally her head was trying to explode. No wonder she had a headache. I then injected a dye through that drain to see if this cyst even communicated with the ventricle. And as you can see here, all the white stuff is the dye and that this cyst took up no dye. So my theory was correct. She had a trapped cyst in her brain. Well, how do we untrap it? Once I had the diagnosis, that part was easy. You can see the area where we have normal fluid flow and then this area right here where there is abnormal fluid flow. So literally all I need to do is make this communicate with this. There is a very fine membrane which appears to be right here. So all I need to do is to get into the space and poke a hole here so this can drain into the normal space. That's called a cyst fenestration and we can do that endoscopically or basically through an incision no bigger than this pen. How cool is that? Here's the cool part where you see this instrument that's getting placed through this membrane right here and that's opening up the two spaces so now they can communicate together. After the surgery, I left the drain in place in order to monitor her pressures, which came back to normal over just a few days. Repeat imaging showed significant decrease in the size of that cyst. For a period of a few weeks, she had no more headaches and she only had one small little scar to show for it. So I hope you guys learned something from this week's case study and stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.